We are in one of the nautical hubs of Azimut, exactly speaking that of Savona on the Ligurian coast. In the middle of all these yachts I found a little jewel. It's a bit smaller than the others, but it seems to share their outstanding quality. Here it is, the Azimut Atlantis 43. The first thing to note on the profile are the windows. They appear to be just portholes. Instead, within the dark-coloured band, windows are included, giving better views and more light below deck. It's a hard top of Italian inspiration and its elegant design shows in an obvious way. Observe the refinement of the dark profiles, the carbon look, which emphasises the modern lines of the sides and of the deckhouse, and give a sense of sportsmanship that this type of boat should definitely express. The two sun decks on the bow and stern measure more than two metres in length and are wide enough for three people. On the stern, the sofa back is mobile and extends into the solarium. You can sunbathe next to the helm. The swim platform is submersible and the garage fits a tender of 210 centimetres. In the cockpit they have included nine seats. They are comfortable and well protected. The table is extendable and then there's the bar area. The walkways measure only 25 centimetres wide but the high siding makes them safe. The hard top structure takes up very little space, so the opening surface is as wide as possible. When you choose a boat, you should pay attention to the levelness of the deck. Any unevenness of the cockpit can be uncomfortable and dangerous. This deck is all at the same height. Now let's see the interior. And let's start from the master cabin. The atmosphere is elegant, very different from sportsmanship expressed inside. If you want, you can choose fabrics from great Italian brands, such as Missoni and Laura Piana. The bed is 2 metres by 150 centimetres. They have not left any space unutilised, and they even have hanging cabinets. On a boat of this size, attention to centimetres can really make a difference, and Azimut designers have done a great job. The lockers, for example, have a capacity of 4,100 litres inside and 3,800 litres outside. And a matter which is important for the northern populations, the height of the cabin and the bathroom is 192 centimetres. Now let's look at the guest cabin. It is very different from the cabins a few years ago. The entrance height is 192 centimetres, as in the other rooms. It adapts to different needs thanks to the sliding bed and you can add a third one if desired. A boat with a hard top should have a nice dinette below deck because in case of bad weather or chilly evenings, passengers must take shelter here. It is quite comfortable because the environment is very bright. The sofa converts into a bunk to get a total of six beds. In the kitchen you can have, in addition to the ceramic burner, the microwave and the full-size fridge, also a dishwasher and a washer-dry unit, so that when you sail you can be completely self-reliant. This model is perfect for those who are practical and have an appreciation for aesthetics, so it seems ideal for women. For those instead who prefer the technical topics, we are ready to start the trial. The Azimut Atlantis 43 is equipped with two Volvo Penta D6 400 horsepower engines paired with stern drives. It's a high power that, until recently, could only be used with this type of propulsion. But Volvo Penta has strengthened their stern drives. Many boats of this size have the propulsion shaft line, i.e. a fixed propeller and rudder blade. With separate stern drives, you can manoeuvre better. 
per esempio in Porto si manovra come con For example, in the harbour, as when you maneuver with the shaft line using the inverters to direct the boat to turn on itself. But in this case, we can also direct the thrusts of the propeller, and in this way, any action becomes faster and more effective. And then Volvo has also implemented the joystick for this type of propulsion. In short, you no longer have to be afraid. You no longer have to have anxiety while mooring. There is the joystick. Visibility is perfect because the windshield is very wide, very high, and the pillars are thin. We also have a large side window that can be opened. Useful for when you need to look out and closely monitor the distances while mooring. The steering position is correct because there is a platform to prop your feet, a seat with an adjustable back, and then there's also room for a screen, 16 inches. A Poppa abbiamo quattro eliche che spingono, due per ogni motore, contro rotanti. E il vantaggio... Aft, we have four propellers that push us, two for each engine, counter-rotating. And the advantage is that you just touch the gas and you're planing. It takes three to four seconds to enter the setup, and in ten seconds you can reach 25 knots. The acceleration test doesn't make much sense on a pleasure boat, but it does allow you to verify that the right power has been chosen, that the correct reduction ratio has been found, and that the propeller dimensions are correct. Yes, because you accelerate like this, it means that the whole propulsion system is designed accurately. La giornata è favolosa, soltanto un po' freddina e molto ventosa. The day is fabulous, just a little chilly and very windy. The sea, however, is not affected. But at least along the coast it remains almost calm. But imagine that for a series of unfortunate events, you're sailing in heavy sea conditions. Then what should be our driving style be aboard the Azimut Atlantis 43? Well, we begin to reduce the gas to simulate the situation. We troviamo la minima velocità di planata. Ecco, a 12 nodi. And we find the minimum planing speed. Here, at 12 knots, the boat is still in a favourable position. I can control it very well. I have good visibility and this speed. And even if the waves were very high, I wouldn't slam them, but pass over them gently, without stressing the hull structures, the equipment or the passengers. This kind of yacht is often the dream for those who own a speedboat, a dinghy, or maybe someone who has never had a boat. But it is difficult to drive on the open sea. We saw that in the port, manoeuvres are performed very easily, possibly with the help of the joystick. And for sailing, just accelerate. It is clear a good commander can hone the performance. You can look for the best comfort depending on sea conditions by adjusting both the trim and flaps. If you are not familiar with these tools, don't worry, you will begin to know them little by little. Now, for example, I lowered the flap to become more stable in the water. The speed is 21 knots at 2,500 rpm, and consumption is about 75 litres an hour. Let's give a little more gas. Controlle ottimo. The control is very good. The smoothness of the turn, the course control, are really accurate. I feel I can push even a bit more on the gas. The ideal cruising speed is 25 knots, 2,750 rpm, with a consumption lower than 100 litres an hour. And then, I say again, if I adjust the flap and trim for the best performance, I can improve it even more. Here, for example, in this moment, 
I make sure that the flaps do not interfere with the boat by raising them. I raise a bit also the trim. The hull becomes lighter on the water and gains speed more easily. We are still below 100 litres an hour and we have passed 27 knots. Proviamo a levare i flap completamente. Proviamo a dare tutto il trim. Esagerando. Let's try to lift the flap completely. We try to increase the trim all the way, a bit of an exaggeration. At this time also the stern comes out of the water, at least the side sections. The centre portion of course remains immersed to give us good control and speed is 36 and a half knots. Wow, this is a fast boat. I would want to set a turn at this speed. The outdrives allow an agility that fixed propulsion lines cannot give. Even in turns, it is possible to adjust the flap and trim to find greater stability while avoiding yaw. Here the wind is stronger and the waves caused by the wake might also throw some spray on the deck, but it doesn't happen. This means that the spray rails along the hull were well designed. If there are not splashes on the windshield, I drive better and the passengers, well, they don't get wet. The Azimut Atlantis 43 is a great little boat, but there's a problem. The Azimut boats are of great quality and for quality you pay. For example, this model costs... Should I tell you or let you discover for yourself? Sometimes the surprises are very pleasant.